All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Uh, 20 minutes is a long time, so I'm going to get right to it. I want to talk about gold cycles and some of the things that we've observed uh, in when, uh, when uh, trading gold. And I want to show you how I use options to take advantage of these different cycles. So particularly, we're going to focus, focus on the GDX. We just wanted to take a broad base to understand just how gold and gold miners work. And we had only a simple criteria, which is we wanted a trend to be in place for at least two months, and we wanted uh, the move to be greater than 20% to measure a cycle. So I ask a question, is that how long do you think the average gold miner cycle based on that criteria is? How many of you thinking one year? How about three years? Five years? How many of you want to know? So. When we look at uh, I, we, in GDX going back to 2006, uh, had eight cycles, uh, eight declines and eight rises. And what's interesting is that based on that criteria that I showed, there was an av the average length of one of the rises was about 9.28 months, which was about a 90% rise in the GDX. At the same time, the average decline lasted very close to nine months as well. Uh, and the average decline was near 40%. That's pretty volatile, right? Yeah, you need some ulcer medication to, uh, to ride out a trend like that. So I want to talk about options as a strategic tool to be able to take advantage of these types of cycles. And so uh, particularly, we're going to just keep it simple, to only 20 minutes. I want to focus on call options and particularly what they are. When you buy a call option, you secure the right to be able to buy those shares in the future. So you're buying a contract that you at any point can call in and physically buy the shares. The counterparty who you bought the option from has an obligation to sell them to you. And this is done at a fixed price over a fixed period of time. And one of the things that when you buy one of these options, is uh, their American style, which you, as the buyer, have the ability to buy in your shares anytime you want. You, uh, now, it doesn't make it a good idea to do it, but you actually have the right. You can call up your broker, say, I'm going to exercise my right to buy these options uh, or the stock, and the next day, the shares are actually delivered to you at the price you wanted them at. So let's look at an example. I want to focus particularly, though, on long-term options. Uh, why? Because what did we just determine was the average length of, a, uh, of one of these cycles higher or lower in gold? About nine months. So if we are looking at an option that is one or two years in duration, we have a pretty good chance that we're going to be able to hold an option through one of these full cycles. And, uh, and so let's see how that would play out. So we're going to look at long-term options on these different resource and gold uh, plays. And we're going to focus on GDX to keep it simple. You could do this on individual gold stocks. But we're going to do an example with three investors. So investor A is a stock-only investor. They like, they like the gold miners. They're just going to buy the shares. They heard these options were, uh, were risky business, and they only want to buy the shares themselves. Investor B is using the options as a strategic tool. Uh, but they're not seeking to leverage. They're using it as a, uh, a stock replacement strategy uh, of owning them. And then, of course, there's investor C in, in our example here who is leveraging up and using the options to control more stock than they have money. So let's, look at an, uh, let's move on and take a look at the criteria. So we have uh, all of them, all three, investors A, B, and C, are bullish on these gold miners. And they all have $21,000 cash. And GDX closed uh, at actually $20.31 uh, on Friday, but I'm rounded at the $20, so it's easier for you to do the math. And we're talking about buying a one-year-out call option on the GDX uh, that gives us the right to buy the, uh, the GDX shares at $20 a share. So it's a $20 strike price on there with one year of time on the option. And this option costs $2.50 in the markets right now. So let's actually look at uh, this br and break it down. So what does investor A do? All of you know how to be investor A. I just buy the shares. So I have $21,000 in cash. I'm going to turn around and buy 
1,000 shares of the GDX and control and buy $20,000 of, of the stock and I'm going to turn around and have $1,000 sitting in cash. So how about investor B? Investor B is not looking at leveraging with the options. They want to actually use the options as a strategic tool to control the same amount of stock as investor A. So each call option controls 100 shares. So in order for an investor using options to control the same 1,000 shares that investor A does, they turn around and they buy 10 of these call options at $2.50 a share. They outlaid $2,500 to buy these 10 call options. Now that's a 20, they're controlling $20,000. They have the right to buy $20,000 of stock, but they are le uh, they're only committing $2,500 and they have $18,500 in cash sitting in their cash balance. This money is not yet committed uh, to, uh, to a trade. And of course, then we have investor C who turns around and wants some juice, wants to leverage up their trade. And so what they want to do is control more stock than they would be able to buy uh, unless they were using margin. And so in investor C turns around and purchases 15 call options, which is uh, giving them the control of 1,500 shares of the GDX, which is uh, uh, the equivalent of $30,000 of stock. Now at $2.50 a share, uh, that in the end cost them $3,750. Remember, they started with $21,000. All three of our investors started with the same amount of money. So this investor now is left with $17,250. So how did they do? Let's, let's go through it. So I don't want to make up scenarios. We just went through the, uh, earlier in looking at the cycle and determined that the average, just the average cycle rise in a gold miner was, uh, took about nine months and was about a 90% rise in the security. Now, at the same time, the average decline was about 40% in nine months. So let's go through this exercise of saying, well, what, how would, did the investors do if scenario one happened, the stock went up uh, to 90%. Scenario two happened where the, stock, uh, the GDX remained unchanged. And scenario three, where we were dead wrong and the GDX dropped 40%. How did they fare? So let's go with investor A. This is a very linear uh, relationship. It's a delta one. In other words, every dollar that GDX rises, investor makes a dollar, right? And so uh, in this scenario, if the stock proceeds over nine months of time to r rally to $38 a share from the $20 we purchased, then the, stock, the investor would progressively be making their money up to being a, up $18,000 on the stock. So how did our options trader fare against the stockholder? Well, investor B had a carry cost. The option, we had to pay a premium to actually own the call option. And so what you can identify is that investor B did not make as much money as investor A. Uh, in each scenario, investor B uh, is making money profiting from the upside. But the beautiful part, if you notice, if you can do the math in your head, the beautiful part about investor B is that the more right he, is about the, or, he or she is about the stock, the uh, closer the delta is approaching one, which means you're, you're, the more, higher it goes, the more the option behaves like the stock. So you have this relationship where when the stock goes from $35 to $38, at that moment, investor B is up almost $3,000, no different than investor A. At that moment, the option is behaving like it was the stock. In investor C, who is leveraged, well, listen, we were leveraged. Any, anyone who's leveraged is going to be making more money than someone who isn't leveraged. And so you can see investor C, who owned 15 uh, call options and was synthetically uh, participating on the upside with that, uh, ends up making more money uh, and is, uh, is very happy with the returns they made in, over that nine-month cycle. So this is the nice, rosy part of options. So how, do, does, how does, do these options fare in the other scenarios? So let's go to uh, scenario number two. And over the next nine months, GDX does nothing. It just stays flat. And what you can see that the investor, A, uh, is flat. The, in the end, they lost the opportunity to have made money. 
uh, and uh, in the end, I'm not accounting for interest or dividends into any of these equations. But what you can see is investor B and C uh, are burning premium. When you buy a call option, the option decays in time and there's a cost to actually carrying it. So this is uh, the negative side of options. That is something that you have to accept when you are using options as a strategic tool. But it's actually scenario three that I feel is the most valuable. So let's take a look, and this is really where I want all of you to, uh, to re realize the strategic benefits of options. What if we were wrong? What if we were, uh, or early, let's call it, because that's what gold investors do, we're just early. That's a, it's a, eventually we'll be, we'll be right, right? And so we're early to the gold trade. And uh, we catch one of these cycles and gold proceeds to decline. And in this scenario, you can see investor A is losing at a delta one. Every dollar the GDX drops, we're losing $1,000. And so as the, the GDX proceeds to lose 40% of its value, uh, investor A is down $8,000. But how did investor B fare? Investor B uh, ended up starting losing a little bit more because there's time decay. But there's this beautiful asymmetry in options, which is that the more wrong you are, you are losing at a slower and slower pace the more wrong you get. The delta on the option is approaching zero throughout that relationship. And so what you see here is that even though investor B made much of the same return on the way up, on the way down, investor B is losing less. Now, investor C made more money, right? Investor C was leveraged. When, when you think leverage, you're immediately saying, well, that means they're taking a huge amount of more risk. Therefore, they should have lost more money than investor A. But if you look here, Investor C, who was leveraged controlling 1,500 shares, or about $30,000 of the GDX, is only limited his risk down to about $3,700. So in other words, on the way up, they made more money. On the way down, they lost less. That's asymmetry. And anyone who learns to utilize options as a strategic tool is learning to use options as a way of managing risk, not creating risk. And that is uh, one of the key messages that I want to get across to all of you. But there, this isn't the, my favorite part of the options. Let's get to my favorite part. Investor A was fully invested. Investor A uh, uh, put uh, $20,000 into the stock. It's now worth $12,000 and their market value is $13,000. But they have only $1,000 cash. So in the, unless they're willing to margin themselves, they really are now long-term investors. So many, many uh, basically waiting for the fact that one day GDX will be right on it and it'll come back. And eventually it will, because it's cyclical. But what can investor B and C do? Investor B and C have all of this cash. Remember, investor B and C had the same 20 th some odd thousand dollars as investor A, but they only ended up deploying 25 and 3,700 dollars. So while the GDX turned around and dropped, they still had this very large cash reserve sitting on the sidelines, not invested in the market. So what am I going to do if I know that a typical cycle has ended in gold? I can now take advantage of the GDX down at 12. So now what I can do, investor B and C can turn around and invest that excess cash. And now, let's say projecting nine months forward. So we just said we, we, in our scenario, we were going nine months into the future. And so now it's October 18th of 2019. And the GDX dropped 40% and is trading at $12 a share. Now we can calculate using options, uh, simulators and calculators that a January 2021 option, now a year out further, we were originally buying the 2020s. Now a January 2021 call option at the $12 strike is $1.75. So now what we can do is we lost some money on the way down. There's no sugarcoating that. We were early to the trade, gold went down, we lost some money, but now what we can do is turn around and buy new call options 
down to $12 on the GDX and participate on the upside of gold from $12 higher. So in this example, investor B takes that 18,000 cash that they had and turned around by 15 call options at the $12 strike out to 2021. And so now they are controlling a new 18,000 share position in the GDX, but now 1,500 shares. It's like a dollar cost average. They were losing on 1,000 shares on the way down, now repositioned themselves down to $12 a share, and now they're, ma they're profiting on the way up with 1,500 shares. So now in this scenario, an investor B C in this example turns around and invests uh, into 20 call options, giving them a $24,000 exposure. And, they're, and both of them still have in the 13,000 to 15,000 cash available. And they didn't burn all of their cash reserves repositioning on gold. So one of the key benefits is it gives you optionality. Even if I was early to the trade, I have a way of repairing it and putting myself in a position to actually take advantage of the eventual new gold cycle that will come, even if I was early to the first one. That is the, when you, you learn to use options as a strategic tool uh, to build your positions around for something like the GDX or any gold miner, it gives you the ability to trade around the movement of the stock. And gold miners are beautifully cyclical in being able to capitalize on these big swings higher and lower. Whether you're right or early, you're gonna find a way to manage through. So with a, a few minutes left, I'm gonna give you three rapid fire options trades that you can come and approach me afterwards on. So the first one, Newmont Mining, just took over Gold Corp, gonna be a, one of the, is it gonna be the largest gold miner in the world at this point with the merger? Anyway, uh, it, it's definitely gonna be one of the largest. And um, the stock has corrected a little bit on that. You can sell 10 January 2020 puts at the $25 strike for 90 cents. It generates you a 3.6% cash flow for an obligation that you would have to buy in shares of Newmont at, at, um, at the, the $25 price. So an average buy-in price of $24.10. So if you own Newmont and you're trying to lower your cost base and generate some income along the way, selling the put option as an income strategy and using it as a way to enter the stock at favorable levels is a great strategy. Number two, learning to hedge wrap your gold. Now, whether you own your gold bullion in uh, the futures market or whether you own it in physical form in your safe, what you can do is uh, hedge wrap the gold in the futures market at almost a zero cost. Now you have to carry a margin in doing it, but here I'm, what I'm doing is I'm selling a July uh, uh, $1,400 call option, uh, generating a $1,300 credit, and then buying a put option that removes all of the downside risk of gold below 1230. So when you hear Brent Johnson or Katusa coming on saying, I think gold's going still back to 1100 or something like this, well now you could hedge wrap your gold position and actually remove the risk of loss below 1230 and you can do it at no cost by just capping the upside of your gold for, uh, for the summer, into the summer at 1400. And the third one is a directional collar on Kinross. Here you could, let's say, buy, for, buy your shares of Kinross in 100 share increments, and you can go out and do a, a collar out a year out. You can sell at four and a half dollar, Kinross right now is just over three dollars. You can turn around and sell a four and a half dollar strike covered call, generate a 20 cent income on it, giving yourself almost 50% upside on Kinross. You can use that premium to buy a protective put at two and a half and limit your risk down to 20%. So you built a scenario where I have a 50% upside but a 20% downside risk. You build a beautiful asymmetric uh, payoff and it gives you the ability to have staying power where you're not noised out of the stock based on short term swings. So that's just three great ideas of how you can use options. Uh, just very quickly, what do I do and how do I do it? Big picture trading uh, and at Macro Voices, what we do is we take macro insights, market timing, and we use options as a strategic timing tool in or, or, and a mechanism to managing risk. 
And that really defines what we are at Big Picture Trading. Uh, it's a nice graphic muss up there. <laughs> the G is supposed to be on the other side. Anyway, we have a great uh, VRIC special uh, where uh, to subscribe to Big Picture Trading, it's $99 a month. But if you subscribe uh, to the just a one month, we have a live three-hour options training boot camp happening here in Vancouver that's f completely free where you get to spend three hours with me learning how I use options on this. So if you want to learn about it, our booth is over by the food court. I've run out of time. They're going to kick me off here in a second. But, uh, but if you want to come and see me, you can learn about our programs. Luke is also going to be in the back giving out handouts uh, to learn more about what we do. Thank you very much, everyone.